patch 1.12 brought us Monument of Power featuring Tom Kench, Soraka, and Shivana. On top of this, a few popular cards like Bastion and Hush were adjusted. What impacts will these have on the latest patch? With many new champs appear on this list, this is Top 10 Decks Patch 1.12. This video has been done in collaboration with Bomber TV. This deck features the new champion Shivana. The meta is still heavily revolved around burn aggro and leasing combo, so this deck doesn't actually find a way to shine. The deck is a Damasi and Targon mix featuring Fiora and Shivana. It's a mid-range deck with a strong ramp to mid-game with all cards but 4 costing 5 or less mana. The deck appearing on this list is due to Shivana being kind of underwhelming and it's heavily carried by the dragons, which are actually good by themselves. Basically, Shivana is not the power card of this deck, unlike many other decks which revolve around the champions. As for how the deck plays out itself, you basically want to survive early game by either fighting the board presence with cards like Dragon Guard Lieutenant, and cheap combat tricks like Pale Cascade and the new Sharp Sight. Or we want to speed up playing with our ramp basically to Herald of Dragons. Then your win condition. It's like the strength of every mid-range deck, so you want to take value trades with challenges such as Fiora or Screeching Dragon. You also have many strike cards at your disposal, like Single Combat and the strafing Strikes generated by Shivana. And then if that's not enough, you also have your finisher cards in the form of Infinite Mind Splitter and the Sky's Descent. On a side note, there's also always the Fiora Wing Condition, which synergizes really well with all the strike cards naturally included in this deck. Overall, this is the first mid-range deck in a long time, and it feels like it's also nice to include a new champion. If Dragons and Shivana will get more love in the future, this may well jump to the top of this list, so keep an eye on this arch though. Scouts has been staple since the release of Bilgewater, defining what the aggro strategy to beat is. This deck has an incredible curve, benefiting from all the great units coming from Damasia. It's basically more Damasia featuring three copies of Misfortune. In patch 1.12, the playstyle of this deck has not changed much, but seems to have success due to midrange doing well in the current meta. On the mulligan, you always want to keep Misfortune and Quinn as those are key cards in the deck, but it's also important to have your 1 drops, Fleet Feather Tracker in particular, so you can also swap your Quinn for a Lucian if you feel Lucian suits your playstyle better, so a little bit of flexibility here. You want to level up Misfortune as fast as possible, which is always great if you want to attack with your scouts. So don't worry about killing your scouts, because basically you just need to get those attack rounds in as much as possible. You also have a lot of ways to generate value thanks to your tricks. Rangers resolve to counter AoEs and get value trades on wide blocks. Uh, and you've also got single combat to remove their key cards, often getting a value trade by doing that. There's also repost as a way to shield from removal and deal bonus damage. And finally, back to back, which is amazing if casted on your scout units, as they benefit from double the amount for that. Obviously, they're getting two attacks, so double the bonus. This is the deck we love to hate, and it's back. Midrange Frostbite featuring Ash and Sejuani. It features cards mostly from Failure, but also contains 11 Noxus cards, which work hand in hand with high powered cards and the Frostbite mechanic. This deck has quite a varied mana cost, with there being 6 cards at every mana value from 3 to 6. This deck has a lot of ways to start aggressively, thanks to Omen Hawk and the Forest and Trapper mainly. It has also ways to refill your hand with the Forest and Sentry and Babbling Burge. There are many ways to remove big targets, thanks to Frostbite effects, followed by Calling Strike and wide boards thanks to the reckoning. The main wind condition is Ash, often comboed with harsh winds to make it unable to block most of your board and obviously winning the game with just three attacks. Even though Trafari and Assessor got nerfed as well as the champion spell of Sejuani, this deck is still very consistent. 
Overall, this is a very solid deck, not as fast as other options, but definitely a high win rate and worth considering. Lux Leona Control is a standard control deck featuring cards from Targon and Demacia. It's a standard control deck mana-wise as well, with 20 cards costing 5 or more mana. The deck revolves around the daylight mechanic and expensive spells. With Leona and her cheap Daybreak units such as Solari Soldier, you can fend off most of the threats coming at you from the very first turn. You'll be able to level up Leona super quick and this can punish your opponent for developing, basically with stuns from Leona. This works perfectly with Raven Daylight Spear for a nasty stunning combo every time a Daylight card is used. On the other hand, Lux is a great finisher combined for expensive spells like Star Shaping, Remembrance and Concerted Strike. Judgment is another option for Lux, but can be very committal and badly countered by your opponent removing your judging unit. It's always a threat however that your opponent should watch out for, but also do take care when using, so look at their mana costs and ways they can counter it for example. With Radiant Guardian, use Guiding Touch, Star Shaping, and Concerted Strike. The lifesteal on her will make this deck have great survivability and help you stay in control till late game. The main weakness of this deck is mid range and something to consider is that these games are pretty long with this deck, therefore not the best choice if you really want to kind of climb through the ranks quickly, but say you want to actually win the games. This deck, there's not much going on, it features cards from Feryord and Shadow Isles and has a crazy high number of spells, 27 in total. It's quite expensive featuring 9 epic cards and 6 champions. The aim is to control the board against aggro strategies with AoE such as Avalanche, Withering Whale and Icequake. Here with other removals such as Vile Feast, Unspeakable Horror and Catalyst of the Eons which is obviously going to be used in your ramp as well to late game. Later on is your win condition and it's this is Call of the War Mother, or simply overwhelm your opponent with Trundle and Trindamir, followed by Atrocity to quickly finish things off. The art type remains unchanged, however, with patch point 11, the increasing popularity of Targon and Hush, even though this is actually nerfed in the same patch, makes his art type a little less consistent than it has been due to more unfavourable matchups. Hush in patch 1.12 was nerfed again, so the win rate of this deck has once again bounced up a bit, sticking it on this list in the position it is. The game plan is pretty simple, be as aggressive as you can and reduce your opponent's health to as low as possible, and then burn them out using They Who Endure plus Atrocity. When they summon They Who Endure, it should be mega buffed up stats wise due to all the units that have died already. You can quickly pile up these deaths using cards like Glimpse Beyond and Ravenous Butcher. Some notable additions from the Targon release are Doom Beast, Stalking Shadows and Unspeakable Horror which all kind of contribute to the same style flowing deck, otherwise this deck remains the same that it has been for the last couple of patches. This deck remains untouched from balance changes so its popularity has continued to rise. This card aggro has seen a rebirth in some basically more recent patches and it's still a good contender even in the Targon meta. It features cards from Piltover and Zorn and Noxus with all but two cards costing four or less mana. It's got a nice addition which is Poro Cannon which both synergizes with discard mechanics and gives you cheap elusive units to go wide and then buff all your wide buffs which basically makes it a natural fit in this strategy. Also, it's not unusual to take your opponent off guard and discard cards like Vision or Flame Chompers in a moment where you're at zero mana and your opponent does not expect any reaction from you, which can lead to some quite extreme punishes if you time it right. Other than that, the game plan has not changed from recent patches. Go wide early thanks to Rummage, discarding cards like Jury Rig or Flame Chompers. After this, then buff your wide board thanks to Vision or Arena Battlecaster. 
finally, when you're running out of steam, refill with Augmented Experimenter, the most expensive card in this deck. Overall, it's a pretty fast deck, and its refill capabilities can make mid-range matchups easier, which have been popping up more lately. This is another fairly untouched deck, however some versions of his archetype did run either Petty Officer or Yordle Grifter, which were both obviously nerfed recently. So the win rate and variety decreased a bit in this archetype, but it's still strength and worthy of a high position on this top 10. It features cards from Noxus and Bilgewater. There's a mix between burn and control deck. Twisted Fate's a great card to stall, either to AoE with a wide board, or to stun and set up removal of a big threat. Swain is your finisher, but only if you combine with the Leviathan, which is much more important than Swain himself. It gives you a way to trigger his Nexus damaging trigger. The other cards are pretty straightforward and just removal tools which are also needed to level up Swain. A notable card is Nox and Golotine, and it's so easy to basically deal damage with this card. Uh, and you can set it up nicely with Twisted Fate or Make It Rain, to the point where you can spend a turn to remove their board, and given that on average you're removing something which costs more than 3 mana, you get the upper hand in that trade. This is Pirate Agra and it's been here for a while now, featuring cards from Noxus and Bilgewater. Patch 1.11 did nerf the very strong card in this deck, Petty Officer, however it still remains extremely viable, and whilst it didn't actually affect the deck too much then, now in patch 1.12 we drop him for Iron Ballista, and we continue to see the addition of Cracksort Corsair, which was buffed in the previous patch. The power cards here are Misfortune and Gangplank, even if Misfortune will have a very hard time levelling up here, she's just here to be more consistent way to level up Gangplank and to make your board wide and threatening as possible during your attacking turns, whilst Gangplank can end the game with wide, against wide boards and therefore making an aggro mirror much easier to deal with. This deck has a lot of ways to end the game with burn units like Imperial Demolitionist or Jack the Winner. You also have Zap Sprayfin, which is a great way of finding your burn spells like Noxin for Vore and Make It Rain. Finish off the game with the biggest burn spell in the deck, Decimate. Lee Sin has seen a lot of play in the last week after the buff on patch 1.10 and got a lot of an additional buff in patch 1.11 thanks to the buff in Bastion. But now coming back to patch 1.12, the deck remains mostly the same, as the minor nerf to Bastion didn't really change anything, as the main problem here is Lee Sin, which didn't get nerfed, making a lot of the community quite mad to be honest. The only change was dropping Zed for Diana. The reason for this may be the fact that Zed really needed protection given by Bastion, which is now a little bit more costly, and therefore making Zed a little bit worse, as well as Discord aggro being more consistent than ever. Uh, basic meaning there's mystic shots left, right, and centre, which clearly counter Zed. Instead, Diana can get trades and for cheaper, so she doesn't really need protection. As if she gets removed, you've got the mana advantage or your equal. Whilst she already synergizes quite well with the deck, as we run Pale Cascade uh, as a n normal card in the standard version. The main combo here is to give Overwhelm to Lee Sin thanks to Zenith Blade, so that when he levels up you can deal both damage from his Dragon's Rage and his normal attack thanks to Overwhelm, basically dealing double unblockable damage most of the times leading to a 0 KO. With other defensive units such as Eye of the Dragon and cheap tricks like Guiding Touch and Power Cascade, this deck has high odds against aggro matchups, making this deck an all-rounder only weak to bad draws. So I know many of you are expecting to see more new champions on this list. The truth is everyone's been playing Tom Kench and Soraka, so it's really dropped their win rates. Remember, high play rates typically have medium play rates. The data here presented is analysed from Mobile Analytics by Bomber TV, a Masters tier player with a background in game theory and game design. He took most of the winning archetypes into Masters tier, excluding the ones with tiny play rates, and analysed their key properties on why they are so strong. A link to his channel is in the pinned comment and in the card above.
What deck are you having the most luck with so far in patch 1.12? I would love to hear in the comments. Up next is best meta decks patch 1.12 taking a deeper dive into the best decks currently being used in the game which will most likely cover more of the new champions. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.